Hello there, boys and girls. So glad that you have joined us for one more time of Junior Church and glad we can get together. And I know that you guys have had a great week and have enjoyed your uh, your day and the life that God's given to you. I know I sure have. I've been praying for you and asking God to bless you and bless your family. And it's prayer time, matter of fact, right now. So we always want to start our Junior Church just like we want to start our day and end our day with prayer. And so let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Maybe uh, you have a special prayer request that you would like to send in to us there at pray at bbcrhill.org. And uh, mom, dad, maybe you can help them out if there's a certain need that you have uh, there in your home or, or in your family life or whatever it may be, if you'd like to send that prayer request to us and then I will I may recognize you next week uh, with that prayer request. Maybe even have a praise. Maybe you'd like to mention something that God has done for you uh, here recently. And uh, maybe you'd like to mention that. And uh, so anyways, so let's have a word of prayer and let's ask God to bless us and help us as we enter into our junior church time. All right. Hands up in the air. Bring them together. All right. Very good. Bring them over your eyes, over your nose, over your mouth, bowing your head. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for life today. Thank you for giving us life. Thank you that we can see. Thank you that we can hear. Thank you we can smell and we can, we can taste. Thank you that we can use our feet and our hands. God, we thank you for how good you are, how good you have been, and Lord, how good you are going to be. Lord, good, uh, Lord, is your character. Uh, Lord, you are a great and good God, and we thank you for that. And Lord, I pray you'll help us in return to be good to be good to you and to be good to others. Lord, to be good to our moms and dads and to our brothers and sisters, to be good to our neighbors and to our friends, and Lord, be good even to our enemies. God, we pray for these prayer requests that, Lord, are on our hearts and maybe some that have been mentioned in our homes. God, may you answer these requests. Father, thank you that you know our, our needs. Lord, you know our cares. And God, we thank you for that. I pray you'll bless our time now as we enter into our junior church um, session today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Thank you, boys and girls. I surely appreciate you praying for me and praying along with us. All right. It's pledge time. And uh, today we're going to have for our American pledge, Mr. Brandon Gay. And I'm excited about Mr. Brandon leading us. And for our Christian flag, we're going to have Mr. Emery. And he's going to help us out with the Christian flag. And then for our Bible pledge, we're going to have Mr. J.J. Waddell. And so, all right, you guys know what to do. All right, are you ready at home? You ready to help us with our pledges? Yes, sir. Great, I'm sure that you are. All right, Mr. Brandon, you know what to do. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At ease. All right, great job, Brandon. All right, Mr. Emery, it's your turn. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag, to my Savior, whose kingdom and stand, one Savior, crucified, crucified, risen and coming again with flag from liberty to all who believe. At ease. All right. Thank you there, Mr. Emery. Great job, buddy. All right, Mr. JJ, it's your turn, buddy. Call everybody to attention. Here we go. Attention. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I'll make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I'll hide its words in my heart that might not sin against God. All right, boys and girls, great job there with the pledges. Are you ready to sing? Yes, sir. Are you ready? Do we need to have another warm up like we had last week? Because I can do it. All right, I can. Well, I can warm us all up if we need to. But I think we're ready to go. All right, Miss Julia, here we go. You guys sing out with Miss Julia. Sing loud and proud and clear. All right. All right, boys and girls, we're gonna sing. If you're happy and you know it. If you're happy and you know, it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know, it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. 
If you're happy and you know it, say amen, amen. If you're happy and you know it, say amen, amen. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, say amen, amen. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Amen. All right, boys and girls, great job singing there. I surely appreciate that. I love that we can all sing together, even though we are not together. Uh, but we can still sing wonderful songs together, and we definitely know that we are happy in the Lord. Hey, how about let's play a little game. It's called What Am I? What Am I? Hmm. All right, I'm going to give you a description here of uh, different animals or whatnot, and you have to guess, what am I? All right, here we go. I have a long tail, and I swing through the trees, and I sound a lot like this. Like that. What am I? Yeah, it's a monkey. Good job. That was an easy one. That's a little warm up. All right, so I warm up to the game. Lab out this one right here. Ready? I can weigh up to 670 pounds. I'm, I'm the only one of this kind that enjoy playing in the water. I can live up to 26 years in the wild. And I have really cool colors and lines on my body. What am I? I'm a tiger. How many of you got that? Did you get it? Let me know. Let me know how many of these you're getting, all right? I have eight of these. Let me know how many you're getting without my help, okay? Here we go. Here's the next one. Here's number three. I am man's best friend. You should know what it is already. I'm man's best friend. I leave hair everywhere, and I chew up the furniture, especially whenever I'm young. What am I? I'm a dog, of course. I don't know how you can say that a dog is man's best friend when they are a mess. All right, I, I, don't, I don't know. We have a dog, chewed up all of our trim in our house, leave hair everywhere, but still man's best friend. I don't know. Not my best friend, but my wife's. Okay, next. Let's move on quickly, shall we? All right. I look like a horse and a newspaper all at the same time. I look like a horse and... I look like a newspaper at the same time. What am I? Hmm? Anybody get a zebra? Did you get a zebra? All right. Yes. A newspaper because it's black and white. You see? <laughs> it's a little like a horse and black and white. So it's a zebra. Very good. How about this one? I am the largest. This might be a toughie for you. I am the largest rodent in the world. I live near water. And I am about the size of a Labrador retriever. Huh? Which one? What is it? What is it? I'll give you a hint. It starts with a C. It's probably not going to help you. It's called a capybara. Capybara. And it's uh, the largest rodent in the world. It's like a big old huge guinea pig. And, uh, you know, the folks there in Ecuador, they like to eat guinea pigs. And so uh, maybe this guy would uh, suit well there in Ecuador. I don't know. Uh, all right, here's the next one. I have no bones. My skin feels like sandpaper. Super rough. I have up to 35,000 teeth, and they are sharp, and I live in the sea. What am I? I bet most of you got this one. It's a shark. That's right, a shark. And that's pretty cool. has no bones. Pretty neat. All right, how about this one? I have six actual legs. Now, I, have, I look like I have a bunch of legs, but I only have actually six. All right? I eat lots and lots of vegetables. Um, I don't have any lungs, and I drool a lot. I drool a lot of silk. All right. Anybody get caterpillar? Anybody get the caterpillar? How about that? Did you get a, absolutely caterpillar? It drools out silk when it's making this little cocoon. You know, uh, pretty cool little creature. But I know I did. Only had six legs. Looks like it has a bunch more, but it really has just six legs. And the last one, here we go. I absorb water through my skin. Therefore, I really don't have to drink that much. I absorb water through my skin. I can jump 20 times my actual body length. Um, I, I can be heard up to a mile with my voice. And there's 5,000 different types um, of me. 
All right, what do you think? You know what it is? I'll give you one more hint. My legs taste a lot like chicken. What do you think? Huh? What do you think? I think you probably got an Alice. A frog. That's right. So how did you do? Did you get eight for eight? Did you get them all? Let me know. Send me a comment that how many you got. Maybe you got six out of eight or maybe you got just four out of eight, whatever it may be. But send me a comment. Let me know how you did. Now it's our memory verse time, and this week we have a great memory verse. I love this verse. It's Isaiah 40, verse 8, and it goes like this. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. That's right. Let me say it again because it's a great one. Isaiah 40, verse 8. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. That's right, boys and girls. Maybe you can put some kind of little motion to it if you like. That'd be, that'd be great. Like the grass, you know, you got like a, a grass blade, you know, it stands straight. It kind of withereth, kind of goes away. And then you have the flower nice and springy out there, and it's going to fade and shrivel up, and it's going to die. <gasps> But we have the Word of God, and we know the Word of God, it will stand forever. That's right, boys and girls. Hey, can I tell you, the grass is going to wither. Thank the Lord, because I don't like grass, okay? And the flowers, they're going to die, they're going to fade. And you know what, boys and girls? People are the same way. We're going to grow, and we're going to bloom, and then we're going to fade away. We're going to die. But you know what's not going to die? The Word of God. The Word of God, boys and girls, the Bible. The Bible is God's Word, and it's eternal. It's forever. There was no beginning, and there was no ending to the Word of God. I love that, don't you? The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the Word of our God shall stand forever. All right? So let's have just the boys, all right? Just the boys say the verse. Ready? Everybody at home, all right? On all you boys, use that deep, manly voice, all right? Just the boys. Here we go now. No help, mom. No help, girls. Here we go. Ready? Isaiah 40, verse 8. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Very good. Girls only. Here we go. Girls only. And I'm going to use my little girly voice. Are you ready? Isaiah 40, verse 8. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. (laughs) You like that? Yeah. All right. Nope. All right. The things that I do for junior church, right? All right. So boys, good job. Girls, good job. Now we're going to do it all together, boys and girls, everyone together. Ready? Here we go. Isaiah 40, verse 8. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God... mm, It's going to stand forever. That's right, boys and girls. The word of our God shall stand forever. Exactly. All right, how about this? I say one word, and then you say one word, and then I say one word, and then you say one word, and then, you know, you know how it goes. All right, here we go. Ready? Isaiah 40, verse 8. The withereth flower, but word our shall for how we do huh how did you do that was awesome all right now this time you start it out and then i'll say the next word ready here we go isaiah 40 verse 8 grass the fadeth the of god stand ever Very good. We did it. Now, let's say the whole thing together. Ready? Isaiah 40, verse 8. The grass withereth, and the flower fadeth. But the word of our God shall stand forever. That's right, boys and girls. That's the only thing in our world that's sure, can I tell you, is the word of God. The Word of God, you can stand on the Word of God because it is sure. No doubt about it, boys and girls. All right. Great job on that memory verse. Hey, let's sing another song with Miss Julia. All right, boys and girls, we're going to sing, Isn't He Wonderful? Isn't He wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? 
Eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded, and God's word isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded, and God's word isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful. Everybody give themselves a round of applause. Woo! Great job Great. singing, guys. Hey, remember last week we talked about a man, his name was what? It was a holiday, a very special holiday, a holiday that all boys and girls love. You remember what it is? His name was Christmas Evans. That's right, Christmas Evans. And Mr. Christmas Evans was born in 1766. And not only was he born on Christmas, but he also got married on Christmas. How about that? That's pretty cool. Uh, and then, you know, so you got Christmas presents, you get an anniversary present, and then you get your birthday present all on the same day. And you cannot forget your anniversary. So win, 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 all the way around. Pretty cool. But Mr. Christmas, when Whenever he was younger, um, he was born to a very poor family. And uh, what made it even worse than that, you know, his dad was a, sh was a shoemaker and uh, his dad passed away when Christmas was only nine years old. That's pretty tough. How many of you are nine years old out there? Nine, eight, nine, ten. Could you imagine losing your dad and just being your mom there, you know, with all your brothers and sisters? Oh, man, it was so very difficult. And it'd be very, very hard um, for, for us to lose our dad at really any age. But it'd be nine was so very difficult uh, for Christmas. And it's really hard for his mom as well. And, you know, they had other kids and they were really struggling just to put food on the table. Well, uh, Christmas, Christmas's mom had a brother who was very cruel and he was a drunkard. He liked to drink a lot. And whenever he would start to drink, he'd start, you know, slapping and beating um, Christmas around. It made it very, very difficult. Well, he, uh, Mr. Mr. Christmas was able to just to handle this just for, just for six years. And uh, Christmas decided, hey, I need to get out. And so whenever he was 15 years old, he decided, hey, I need to go ahead and I need to leave. I, I just can't handle this kind of life anymore living with my Uncle James. And so he did. He packed up his belongings and he took on off. And he was on his own at 15 years old. Well, at 17 years old, there was somebody that had invited him to a church service. And uh, really, he, he didn't know much about the Lord. And so he went to this church service and God really started speaking to his heart. And that's what the Word of God does. It speaks to your heart. Well, he got saved at the age of 17. Man, he was so excited. He was so pumped up, you know, about what he had just heard and, and who had just met. The Lord Jesus Christ just came inside of his life, just came inside of his heart. And man, he was so excited. He wanted to know more about who God was. And so in order to do that, boys and girls, he needed to know the Bible. He needed to learn how to, how to read the Bible. And there was a problem. Remember, he could not read. That's right. When he was 17 years old, boys and girls, um, he, he got saved and he wanted to read, but he could not read. And so he taught himself how to read at 17 years old. My goodness. And whenever he taught himself how to read, he just started reading every single book that he possibly could. Oh, man, he wanted to know all about the Lord. And, and he was just so excited about his new life in the Lord. He wanted to read and know and study about who God was and, and about what the Bible was all about. And he even felt God's call in his life to, to be a preacher. He was so excited about what God was doing in his life. But there were some folks that were not excited. Remember those guys? It was his quote-unquote friends. It was you know, some of his, his old pals he used to run with before he got saved. And one night, six of them, sur start, they surrounded him and started beating him up, started punching him and kicking him. Remember all that? And then they got a stick and they hit him across the head with it. And it busted him in the, in the eye and it popped his eye out, busted his eye out. And so poor old Mr. Christmas, he was there all by himself and the boys went away laughing and thought, you know, they were just having a good time. But that was something very serious. He lost his eye. And now what's going to happen? You know, you got this guy, he's, he's going around now and, you know, he's learning, just starting his life really in the Lord. And now he just has one eye. But can I tell you, boys and girls, he did not let that stop him. Absolutely not. Nope. He didn't let that stop him. He was determined. He was going to read, even if he had just one eye, he was going to read and he was going to study. And he was going to learn the word of God and he was going to preach. He said, hey, I am going to learn to preach. And you know what? He not only learned the Bible in English, but he also studied Hebrew and Greek. So How about that? What? That's pretty cool. And so he decided he was going to learn everything he possibly could, and he was going to preach. Well, one time he was asked to preach, 
And he was so nervous about preaching that he found a sermon in a book. And he read that sermon over and over and over again until we got to the place that he could memorize it. And he memorized the whole sermon. And he went that night to preach and he memorized the whole sermon. He preached that sermon from memory. And not only did he uh, preach the message from memory, but he also memorized the prayer. And so he verbatim said this message and uh, and repeated the prayer. He was just so nervous, but I cannot tell you, God helped him through all that, through his nerves, and he preached, and he preached with great power, and he preached his own message the next time. Well, one day, he was at an old cottage meeting, and somebody, um, you know, uh, had asked if he would preach, and, the, the you know, the beginning preacher wasn't there. He was running late, and so uh, he was asked to preach. Well, nobody really knew who Christmas Evans was, and so they said, hey, let's have Christmas Evans preach, and Nobody knew who he was, and so he stood up and he started heading over there to, you know, to the pulpit. And they started, you know, they looked at him and they noticed he didn't really look like a preacher. You know, he had, you know, just one eye, you know, kind of something over his other eye. And his clothes was kind of, you know, kind of old and, and, and kind of wore out. And he just didn't look like, you know, a preacher. And some started snickering. Some of them got up and left. Could you imagine? They just got up and left. But can I tell you, when they heard Christmas Evans preach, they knew that God was with him. They knew that he was going to be a mighty man of God. And at the age of 23, boys and girls, at the age of 23, a church asked him to come and be their pastor. And he did. And he was so happy. And he was so excited. And can I tell you, he was also so very humbled that there would be a church, there would be a group of people, people that would want him to come and pastor them. It didn't take long um, for the word to get around about that one-eyed preacher uh, right down there at that Little Baptist Church. And, you know, that Little Baptist Church started to grow and it got it bigger and bigger. And folks started to know who this Christmas Evans was all about. As a matter of fact, boys and girls, his name spread all throughout Wales. And he got to be known as the John Bunyan of Wales. John Bunyan of Wales. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. And you know what, boys and girls, through his lack, um, you know, though he lacked in a lot of um, the physical traits, you know, that we would think is is necessary, like like an eye, you know, and he was illiterate, he was poor. Can I tell you, God used him. God used him not because of his abilities, but because of his heart. He had a great heart for God. And Christmas Evans would go on and he would preach for 53 years. And he was faithful, boys and girls, to his dying day of 72 years old. He was faithful to the Lord. He just loved God, and he just loved God's people. You may not be much or have much right now, but boys and girls, can I tell you, if you have a heart for God, you have all that you need for God to use you. You have all that God needs if you just have a heart for Him. How many of you boys and girls would say like Christmas Evans, God use me. Though I may not have much, and though I I don't have much to contribute, I just want to give my life, give my heart to God. Can I tell you, boys and girls, if that's your attitude and that's your prayer, God can use you just like He used Christmas Evans, a poor, poor little orphan boy, really, that was illiterate till the age of 17, didn't have much money at all, didn't have any education, but he had one thing, and he had the power of God. Is that what you want, the power of God in your life? Well, if you do, you can have it, absolutely. Well, boys and girls, hope you were helped by this short story here of Christmas Evans. It sure helped me to remind me it's not in me, but it's all through Christ and what Christ can do through you. All righty, dude, it's time for bed. Oh no. Bed? Uh, is there something wrong? I'm a, I'm a little scared. Why are you scared, dude? I had a dream that my favorite food in the world Bananas were eating me. That sounds pretty scary, but there's no reason to be scared. You know why? Why? Because God's with you all the time. He's always protecting you, and He'll never leave you. Really? Yeah, and guess what else? What? You can talk to Him when you're scared, too. The Bible says that God wants us to talk to Him. If you pray and you ask the Lord to help you even when you're scared, He'll help you. You're telling me that I can talk to God all the time, whenever I want? Exactly, even in the dark or even when you think bananas are eating you. Whoa, that is so awesome. I definitely have no reason to be scared anymore. So are you ready for bed now? 
Well, uh, first I gotta finish uh, straightening my hair. Uh, why are you straightening your hair? Because this beauty does not just happen every day. I gotta work on it because I saw a monkey doing it. And you know, monkey see, monkey do. Okay, dude. Well, have a good night. I'll see you later. See ya. Ow! You shocked me. Hey, have you ever worked in a garden before? I have. I love working in the garden. I enjoy it. I, matter of fact, I have a little garden right now. You know, it takes a lot of work um, to produce and grow fruit. And it takes a lot of work. Um, but can I tell you that work is well worth it in fruit. And uh, in order for us to have fruit in our lives, we have to do some work. Did you know that Jesus compares us to a garden? That's right. And He wants us to be fruitful in our lives. Galatians 5 verse 22 and 23 says this, that we are to bear the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Wow, that's a lot of fruit. How many of you like fruit? What is your favorite fruit to eat? I love, right here, I love apples. I love apples and bananas. That's right. I love apples. I love grapes. Um, I love uh, uh, oranges. All the. I really like that. And you know what else? I like banana pudding. I like peach cobbler. Throw all that kind of stuff together. I love it. Hey, I love vegetables like corn and okra and squash and tomatoes. And what kind of vegetables do you like? We love them. Hey, they're all very, very delicious. But can I tell you the thing about fruit? It takes work. It takes effort in order for us to bear fruit. Can I tell you, for us to have vegetables at home or for the farmer to have vegetables there in the field for us to eat, it takes a whole lot of effort. It takes a whole lot of work. And for us to be able to produce fruit like love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, to be able to produce the fruits of the Spirit, boys and girls. Hey, it's, it's not our work. It's going to be the work of the Holy Spirit. It's going to be God working through us and in us. And can I tell you, hey, we need God to be able to bear those fruits in our life. Do you want to have those fruits, boys and girls? Hey, I love to eat apples and I love to eat bananas, but can I tell you, God don't eat those. No. God doesn't find any satisfaction in an apple, but God finds a lot of satisfaction in your life, boys and girls, when you bear love and when you bear kindness and when you bear goodness and gentleness and faith. That's the kind of fruit that God's looking for in your life. And you need God's help to help you bear that fruit. That's right. Hey, in Genesis 1, God told Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply. That's right. They were asked to start the very first family. Wow, what kind of pressure is that? Oh. God tells them, hey, I want you to be fruitful and I want you to multiply and I want you to create the very first family in the whole world. Now, boys and girls, I have a beautiful family. I have four beautiful children, a beautiful wife, and a wonderful family that God has blessed me with. But can I tell you, I had a mom and a, a dad and my wife, you know, she had her mom and dad, and we have family books and, and parenting books and what to expect when you're expecting and all those kind of things. We had people to ask advice from, but Adam and Eve, they didn't have anybody to get advice from. Nobody except for God. That's right. And they needed God's help to bear the fruit of what a family is supposed to look like and, and how a family is supposed to live and how a family is supposed to function. They had God. And can I tell you, boys and girls, hey, in ourselves, me as a father, me as a, a husband, in ourselves and your mom and your dad, in themselves, they cannot be fruitful and they cannot multiply their family. They can't help you by themselves. But can I tell you, with God, they can. When they're walking with God, they can be fruitful. They can be a fruitful mom and a fruitful dad. And, and you can be a fruitful son and a fruitful daughter when you're walking with God. Boys and girls, God wants you to be fruitful there in your home. And then God says in Colossians 1 verse 10, it says this, We are to be fruitful, watch this, in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. He says we are to be fruitful. What does fruitful mean? You think about that. What does fruitful mean? We'll break it down. You got fruit and full. 
Switch it around, you got full fruit. Pretty simple to me. God says, I want you to be fruitful in good works. I want you to be full of fruit. Full of fruit. Now, I know a lot of fruitcakes out there, but can I tell you, He wants us to be fruitful in good works. And we can do that, boys and girls, but not in ourselves. We can only do that. Whenever God is helping us, when God enables us and God strengthens us, and when we give our life over to God and we put our mind to the Lord to know Him and increase in the knowledge of God. Boys and girls, you know what's going to happen in our life? We're going to be doing more good works. We're going to be full of good works towards the Lord. And to grow fruit and to be fruitful in our lives, God has to do a few things. And I brought some of my tools with me and uh, some, of the, some of the tools that, you know, we use uh, in gardening. And sometimes God has to use these same types of tools. And I have here a little shovel and I like a little rake, you know, and these are my cute little gardening tools, Aww. you know. And sometimes God has to do the same thing to us like we do in soil, kind of like got to dig it up, you know, kind of got to bust it up and scoop it up and soften up the soil of our hearts for us to grow. Now, all of us want to be fruitful, right? Because all of us want to eat the fruit. And God says, I want you to be fruitful. And in order for us to produce fruit in our life as Christians, we sometimes have to have our hearts softened. And, and God has to put His hand on our body or on our life or on our family. And God has to kind of just massage it around and shovel it around and disturb our hearts a little bit. Why? Because, boys and girls... If our hearts are hard, we are not going to be able to receive the seeds. See, I have all these seeds here. We won't be able to have the seeds of God's Word planted in our life. Now, this right here is a little seed. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a little itty-bitty squash seed. Now, I love squash. And I'm willing to bet you most of you boys and girls probably don't like squash, but I love it. I like my fried squash. I like my bowl squash. I like my squash casserole. I like my squash shish kebabs. I like my... Um, you can go on and on and on about my squash, okay? I love squash. I love all that kind of stuff. But in order to have those fruits in our life and those vegetables in our life, we got to be able to plant some seed. And God says, in order for us to produce fruit, we got to have our hearts softened, but also we got to plant the seeds. And those seeds, boys and girls, are the seeds of God's Word. We have to have God's Word hidden down deep in our heart. And then, boys and girls, you know what happens? Oh, that water, that eternal water. Remember the water that Jesus talked about in John chapter 4? Remember the woman at the well? And the woman at the well was looking for water. And Jesus said, hey, if you had my water, oh, man, it would be sufficient for all of your needs. Boys and girls, when we have Jesus, when we have the eternal water in our heart circulating, and just, and just working in that soil and, and just giving nutrients to the seeds of God's Word. Guess what? Oh my, then the flowers come up. And then it starts to produce some beautiful fruit that God's looking for. Let me ask you a question, boys and girls. Have you had God's Word hidden in your heart? Have you had the water of Jesus Christ coming and and helping that seed and helping your heart and helping your helping in your life? Have you spent much time in the Word? Have you spent much time in prayer talking to God lately? Well, I think you ought to. Maybe you ought to think about that. Maybe today you ought to spend some time in God's Word. But you know what else we need? We need, we need the water and we need the Word and, and we need to have a soft heart. But you know what we also need? We also need to grow with sun. We had to have the S-O-N. And we had to have the S-U-N for vegetables to grow. And we also got to have the S-O-N sun for us as Christians to grow. That's right. We have to be spending time with the Son of God. And so boys and girls, I want to encourage you. Hey, if you like the grapes and you like the squash and you like the broccoli, probably don't. And if you like the bananas and if you like the apples and the oranges and all the watermelon and the cantaloupes, if you like the fruit, boys and girls, you have to be willing to do the work. And if we want to have the fruit of the Spirit, like love and joy and goodness and gentleness and faith, hey, if we want to grow in the Lord, we have to spend time in the garden. We have to allow God to work in our life as well, to cultivate that, cultivate our heart and plant those seeds 
so that we'll be full of good works. Isn't that where you want to be? Isn't that the kind of person you want to be? Isn't that the kind of Christian you want to be? You want to have those good works. You want to have that fruit that remains, that fruit that people can say, hey, that's a Christian right there. He's such a blessing, such a help, such a good boy, such a good girl, doing those good things and talking so kindly and, and being so nice and doing those good things for others. Isn't that the kind of individual and Christian you want to be? Absolutely, I'm sure it is. Well, if you want to do that, boys and girls, you have to put the good things in in order to get the good things out. So boys and girls, I hope that'll be a help to you. Can we pray and ask God to help us with it? Let's pray, okay? Father, we love you. We thank you for loving us. Lord, we thank you for this time that we could spend together in your word, learning how to be fruitful. Lord, learning the kind of fruit that you like, which is love and joy and peace, gentleness and goodness. God, I pray you'll help us to be fruitful Christians. Help us to spend the time in your word. Help us spend time with the Son. Help us to spend time, Lord, with the water of your Son. Lord, that we can grow and we can be fruitful and produce the kind of characteristics that you want us to. Lord, I pray you'll bless these boys and girls, bless their homes, their moms and dads, God, that they would be fruitful and they would, be, and they would multiply there in their home. Pray your blessings on, on your people. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, boys and girls, thank you so much for being with us today. Hope it was a blessing to you, and we'll see you next time. That is so awesome. I'm so glad I can talk to God. <laughs> Preston. Whatever. I'm no, it's it. not good. <laughs> Do blah, 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 you know. Okay. The first one went too good. We're, we're <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the brother, uh, it was Uncle James Lewis. Remember we talked about Mr. Uncle, uh, about Uncle James Lewis? See ya. Ow! You shocked me. Uh -huh.